Health reflects our ability to adapt to stresses. In my field of carcinogenesis, we recognize that there are several stresses that serves as hallmarks to this cancer process. Metabolic, proteotoxic, mitotic, oxidative, as well as DNA damage responses. NRF2 signaling plays an important role as a susceptibility determinant and as a mediator of adaptive responses to these stresses. And as such, we view that NRF2 signaling then is a propitious target for disease prevention through its ability to attenuate and minimize the consequences of a variety of these stress responses. Our understanding of the NRF2 signaling pathway has arisen in large part due to both pharmacologic as well as genetic approaches to dissecting the pathway. We have a number of small molecules that are very effective and in some cases extremely potent activators of the signaling response, molecules such as ultraprase, chlorophyllin, sulforaphane, and most recently and most uh, potently the triterpenoids that can produce profound activations of, of signaling. Companion studies in NRF2 knockout mice help us understand the specificity of uh, NRF2 signaling responses. And more recently, we and colleagues such as Masa Yamamoto have developed uh, tissue-specific, cell-specific keep one knockout mice, which provide us with the genetic hyperactivation or amplification of the signaling pathway. And with these different tools, again, we can understand what are direct and perhaps indirect targets of this signaling pathway. Collectively, we have learned that activation of the NRF2 pathway contributes to resistance to electrophilic, oxidative, proteotoxic, DNA damage, and metabolic stresses and that this appears to be done in a multi-tiered process. Initially, we have damage prevention, prevention of macromolecular damage by electrophiles and reactive oxygen species through elevation of glutathione concentrations, induction of uh, detoxication enzymes such as glutathione transferases, quinone reductase, glucuronosyl transferases, etc. But in addition to preventing this initial macromolecular damage, it also appears that NRF2 regulates the induction of macromolecular damage response systems, such as the 26S proteasome and nucleotide excision repair systems, in which damage can be recognized and either removed or repaired. In addition, there's a third level of protection achieved at the tissue level, which we might uh, term renewal, and this appears to occur through crosstalk with tissue repair regeneration pathways, such as that controlled by the NOTCH1 signaling pathway. Notch 1, in turn, is a transcription factor that is very important in, in uh, determining cell fate decisions, whether a cell is going to proliferate, differentiate, or remain quiescent. So that when a, a certain threshold of damage occurs at the tissue level, Notch 1 activation appears to uh, facilitate survival of the, of the tissue and renewal of damaged cells. We've also been very interested in using some of the small molecule activators of NRF2 in both public health as well as disease mitigation settings. Our principal work has been involved in a hotspot area for liver cancer in eastern China known as Qidong, where upwards of 1 in 10 individuals will develop and die from liver cancer, uh, in part due to uh, contamination of their diet with the mycotoxin aflatoxin, a well-known, very potent uh, human carcinogen. Aflatoxin undergoes metabolic detoxication through glutathione conjugation and our animal models uh, certainly predict that detoxication of aflatoxin would in turn reduce risk. Our randomized clinical trials with NRF2 activators have reinforced this prediction at least at the early level by showing that we can demonstrably uh, diminish the amount of DNA damage that's produced by this carcinogen and can amplify the elimination of detoxication metabolites. So we're optimistic that we can use uh, NRF2 activators in, in population-based strategies prevention, particularly food-derived activators of the pathway, uh, such as with sulforaphane, which is found in abundance in uh, cruciferous vegetables, uh, such as broccoli. So let me briefly summarize by, again, suggesting that NRF2 contributes to protection through multi-tiered mechanisms, damage prevention, damage control, renewal, that these protective pathways can be activated both as direct downstream targets of NRF2, as well as through crosstalk with other transcription factor pathways. Notch 1 is just one example. Small molecules that target the KEEP1 NRF2 pathway show promising pharmacodynamic action in humans, and I think is a, is a great area of opportunity in the future. 
and clearly targeting this pathway may attenuate susceptibility to a number of chronic degenerative diseases. Not only cancer, but uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, perhaps asthma, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, metabolic diseases, and perhaps others.